You know, Chris, I think this will be a fun episode because we're building two projects that are very similar, but they're different takes and slightly different functions. This stool has two purposes. You can step on it and you can sit on it, whereas this stool is just for sitting. Now, of the two, I favor this stool because it's just beautiful in its simplicity. A slab top and three very graceful legs. And the construction is simple as can be. A round tenon in a mortise, but it's durable and it'll last. Yeah, you know, that state construction is pretty traditional, mm -hmm. and it does, it lasts the test of time. But this style, we call this a shaker style it step is. stool, has a little bit more going on, and it kind of brings in some more traditional furniture building type elements that we're used to. You know, we have some angles for the sides, uh, we have some nice beveled treads on there, mm -hmm. and we also have some through mortises, but they're a little bit different than a standard through mortise, so I'm excited to show those. The seat for this first stool starts as a large glued up blank. Now we're using walnut here, and it's gonna look really cool. And the first things that you need to do is take care of a little layout, and it involves some pretty fun geometry. The first step is to establish a baseline for creating that overall kind of rounded triangle shape. To do that, I'm gonna use a large ruler, and then because I'm working with walnut, I'm gonna use a white colored pencil. It's a lot easier to see those lines than using a regular pencil. So I'll create a baseline that's 10 and a half inches long and mark the end points and that'll form two points of our triangle. Now I'm gonna take a beam compass, which in this case is a long wood ruler with a couple of sliding points on it. So I can adjust the position of the points to match the radius of the arc that I wanna create. So I need to find our third point and if you remember back from your high school geometry, I'll set the pivot point on one of the endpoints, make a small arc, then do the same thing from the other side. And now I have my three points for the triangle. These are also going to be the center points for drilling the holes that will hold the legs later on. So you want to keep those marks. Next, we want to create the overall shape. For that, I'm going to readjust the beam compass here for a 12-inch radius. And all this information is provided in the plans. So what I'm going to do is start again with the, our corners and strike an arc on one side, and then just work my way around the three points. The next step because I don't want these corners of the seat to be real sharp, I want to round them off a little bit. So I'm going to use a smaller compass here. And then it's just a matter of blending those corners just by creating another set of arcs. I really like this shape. It's got a nice pleasing look to it without being really hard and angular. At this point, we can take the blank over to the bandsaw and cut it to shape. When you're standing at the bandsaw to make the cuts to bring the seat to its shape, you want to do so in a smooth, fluid motion. A lot of starting and stopping is just going to create a rough edge that's going to be a lot harder to get smooth later on. Now speaking of which, the bandsaw is inevitably going to leave some blade marks along this edge. I used an edge sander to clean up those edges and round the corners, but you could use a palm sander or even just a long piece of sandpaper on a flexible block. Then I wanted to add a few details. On the top edge of the seat, I added a 3 8 inch roundover. That softens the edge just enough so it's not gonna cut into your legs when you're sitting on the stool. On the bottom face of the seat, I routed a pretty hefty chamfer here. What that does is lighten the overall look of the seat without taking away any of its thickness because we want those legs to anchor in a nice thick seat. That brings us right here to the drill press, where we want to drill the holes for the three legs that fit into the seat. The key here is making sure that those legs are all drilled at a consistent six degree angle. Now you can do that freehand if you want, but we've set up a simple jig for the drill press. It's a plywood base and a top, and there's a spacer along the back edge that gives us our correct angle. Now, because the seat has a curved edge, we can't just use a straight fence on the back. 
So what we have here is a pair of dowel pins. And those two cradle the seat and hold it into position. I've installed a one inch Forstner bit and then set the depth stop to drill a one inch deep hole. That's gonna be enough to lock those legs into place. After drilling one hole, all I have to do is rotate the seat around, center it up under the bit, and keep drilling holes. Then I can pass this seat off to Logan and Chris and have them make the legs. The first step in creating our legs is to create the tenon on the end of each one. Now to do this, I've used a jig in the router table. And the bit that I've used is a bowl cutting bit. So rotating the leg in the jig, I can gently cut the tenon to exactly one inch. Now as I approach that diameter, I always want to make sure and go and check against the hole that we've previously drilled in the seat so that we sneak up to a perfect fit. With the tenons done on the legs, it's time to head to the bench. I went ahead and cut everything to final length and I have my blank trapped between two dogs. The first step in creating this round tapered leg is to go ahead and cut the leg into an octagon. In order to maintain a good round shape, we always want to go from square to octagon to round. And that'll help you maintain good even cross sections. After turning our square leg into an octagon, I then proceeded to mark an inch and a quarter round circle on the end of the leg. That is a reference for me to plane to. The one inch round tenon up top will also be a reference to know when I'm getting close to that inch and a quarter diameter. The center of the leg is going to be an inch and five eighths. And as you can see, I've made a center mark so that I know where the apex of my tapers will begin and end. The next step for me is to take my hand plane and taper each face on the top. And then I will rotate the leg until I have each of these faces tapered and meeting my reference points. Once we have the leg into that tapered octagon, I then can proceed to round everything using the hand plane, a spoke shave, whatever you choose. Now it's kind of up to you how far you go with this. If you'd like to, you can leave the tool markings and the facets in the leg. And that's an interesting look and it will say, this was done by hand. Or if you'd like, you can use a rasp, sandpaper and scrapers and make it perfectly smooth so it looks like it came off a lathe. That's up to you. I think for my stool, I'm going to go ahead and leave it slightly faceted. You know, just because Chris whittled the legs on that stool doesn't mean you couldn't turn them. So that's what I'm going to do. I have three leg blanks here, and I've started off by marking the center on the ends. I'm going to use a drive spur and pound that in one end on the center point. We'll get that in the lathe. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into a round blank. I'm gonna do that with a roughing gouge. Then I'm gonna come back and lay out my tenon. I'll use a set of calipers and a parting tool to go ahead and cut that tenon down to the right diameter, and then I'll make it flat all the way to the end. Then it's just a matter of turning it, the rest of the leg to the shape I like. Then I'll make the other two match that profile and sand them smooth. All right, there we go. So now that I have this leg to a shape I like, I went ahead and sanded it and burnished it with some shavings at a high speed to really smooth it out. Now I'll go ahead and use this as a template to create my other two legs. Well, it's time to glue up our stool. All the usual rules apply about glue ups. We want to apply glue to both the tenon and into the mortise. Now, one thing I do want you to check though, make sure that your tenons are a nice easy fit. Not sloppy, but not tight. Not when the glue is applied, you have to pound them in because if they're too tight, we really run the risk of splitting our seat. I'm gonna give it a little tap just to make sure that it's bottomed out. And since it's one leg at a time, we can take our time and not be rushed. So I'll do a final cleanup of the glue 
and then it's going to be time to let things dry and then we'll need to level our legs out so our stool is nice and flat and even on the floor. Our first stool project started with the top. For the second one, we're going to start with the two sides. Now while they end up being glued together as one L-shaped blank, we're going to start with them separated for now so we can take care of some details. The first of those takes place here at the table saw. I cut a bevel along one end of each of the pieces. Then I move the miter gauge to the other side, set up stop blocks, and then cut a matching bevel on the top edges of all of my pieces. Our next step is to use this dado blade that I've installed to cut some notches on the top end of both of these side pieces. What that's gonna do is hold some splines for the stretchers that are gonna connect these parts later on. Now the key here though is that with a bevel on the top, the workpiece isn't gonna sit square. So we have a beveled auxiliary face that's attached to the miter gauge fence. That's gonna hold the workpiece in position so that I can line it up and then make a notch at each of the marks on the piece. Once that's done, it's time for a little assembly. Cutting the bevels and then the notches while the two halves of the sides are separate makes things a lot easier. Now what we can do is to bring these together and glue them up. I'm just going to take some glue here, apply it to one edge, and brush it out. As you bring these pieces together, you want to make sure that their bottom edges are perfectly aligned. And then also make sure that the top, what's the outside face of the sides is flush as well. Once the glue's dry and you've scraped away any excess, there are a few more details to take care of. We're going to cut a shallow taper on the front edge and on the back edge. I did that at the bandsaw and then cleaned up those edges with a hand plane. Then with the bandsaw, I also made a cutout along this bottom edge, and that'll create feet on the sides and gives the stool a more stable stance. So now it's time to connect these two pieces with some stretchers. So now that Phil has the two sides of the step stool done, we can turn our attention to the stretchers that connect them. And I've already cut those to size. We have two different length ones. We have longer ones for the bottom and shorter ones for the top. And the ends are beveled at a five degree angle. That's so when the sides are sitting up, that angle matches. To connect the stretchers with the sides, we're going to insert a loose tenon. But first, we have to create a slot in the ends of each of these stretchers. We'll do that over at the router table. So to cut the slots in the end of our rails, we have two options, at least here at the router table. The first would be to use a straight bit and then stand the workpiece on end and run it through. But doing that process, here at the router table, probably not the best solution. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bit called a slot cutter. And it does what the name implies, it cuts a slot. So I'm going to use a backer board on the miter gauge. Then I'm going to place my workpiece in front of that. And then I'm going to firmly hold it in place as I make a pass across the bit. And it's going to form the slot. Then I'll just rotate the workpiece and cut the slot in the opposite end. So now that we have all the slots cut in the end of our rails, we can go ahead and glue in the tenons. Let's take a look at the tenons real quick. The tenons are just pieces of hardwood that have been planed down to thickness. In this case, it's 3 eighths of an inch. And they've been cut to size. They're square on one edge. And the other edge has a complementary angle cut on them. So it's a bevel that matches the rails and the tilt of the two sides. So we can go ahead and glue these into place now. And the biggest thing when we glue these in is just to make sure that the angle on the end is sticking outward and we want it to be opposite 
of the shoulder on the rail. All right, now once all the tendons are glued in and the glue's dry, we can go ahead and get the final assembly done. All right, so now that our stool is all glued together, really the only thing left to do is to wait for the glue to dry and take care of the treads. Now the treads are simply cut from a piece of stock. We have two different sizes here. We have a narrower, longer piece for the front tread. And then we have a wider tread that's a little bit shorter and that's for the top. Now the plans call for these to have a bull nose profile around three edges, but with all the angles that are going on in this project, I think it'll be a little bit better if we cut a bevel along them. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this in the vise and cut it. All right, once I have all the bevels cut on the three edges of both treads, you can go ahead and install them. And that's simply done by driving a couple of screws up through the stretchers and into the treads. Our two stools are ready for finish. What I'm going to use is a polyurethane wiping varnish. The reason I'm using a polyurethane wiping varnish is that because this is a step stool, it's going to see a little foot traffic on it, and I want more protection than a thin oil can provide. To apply the polyurethane wiping varnish, I'm just going to use a simple foam brush. I'll saturate all the surfaces, wipe it off, let it dry thoroughly, and then come back later and apply a second coat. One more coat of oil and I'll be finished. These are two great projects with something to teach you. And you'll have two great furniture projects for your home. It doesn't take much to transform an existing plan and make it your own. It could be something as simple as going with some new materials, maybe adding a couple of different details. Or you could be working with the tools that you already have in your shop. Say you don't have a lathe and not into turning. You could use a block plane and some spoke shaves and create a faceted leg like on this stool. And that's what's important, is to take a project, make it your own, and to learn something new in the process. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides, plus we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts. All fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.